hearing of President Obama's Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, CEOs of the four biggest banks, in the hottest of the hot seats, Lloyd Blankfein of Goldman Sachs. 85 Broad Street, that's the home of Goldman Sachs and Lloyd Blankfein. Since they eliminated the uptick rule in July of 2007, there's been a frenzy of corruption on Wall Street with naked short selling stocks they didn't even own. The banks were selling them using computers and secret software to steal the money. Across from the construction site that was once the World Trade Center, Goldman Sachs' new world headquarters. To help foot the two plus billion dollar construction bill, Goldman got New York City and state to bless a 1.65 billion tax-free so-called Liberty bond issue, plus another 66 million in job grants, tax exemptions, and energy discounts. Sachs will have a profit that we estimated about 12 billion dollars last year. Uh, it seems to me that you survived with extraordinary government assistance. Um, we never anticipated the government help. We weren't relying on those mechanisms. We did a capital raise for five and three quarter billion dollars, which you could have made a hot, hot higher. We had access to the capital markets, and we could have made more, and we weren't relying on that government help. Experts explained how Goldman made most of this money by trading for its own account. Is what we do a lot to the economy isn't that visible as an investment bank. They're very important. We help companies to grow by helping them to raise capital. And that he was just a banker doing God's work. We help allocate capital, we raise, we do, we put companies together, we launch new... That classical investment banking function is, is a very small portion of their revenues. I think it's about 10% or so. so. So if he's doing God's work, he's only doing it at 10% capacity. came out in 2009, they had 45 billion of revenue, of which 35 billion was from equity and fixed income trading and commodities and currencies. Now that's 75 percent of their revenue was basically from trading. So 85 Broad Street, that's the home of Goldman Sachs and Lloyd Blankfein. Fiscal year 2009, Goldman Sachs made over 100 million dollars, 131 days. And fiscal year 2010, in the first quarter that just passed, January, February, March 2010, they made over 100 million dollars, 35 days out of 63 trading days and they pitched the perfect game. 63 days of trading in the first quarter and they made over $25 million on every day. In the end of the day, and I'm gonna press you on this, uh, it seems to me that you survived with extraordinary government assistance. Um, we never anticipated the government help. We weren't relying on those mechanisms. And I'm here hoping to bump into Lloyd Blankfein to discuss to put a stop to the money game that they're playing with the use of naked short selling and the manipulation of stock prices through the use of secret codes and secret uh, software that they have employed math wizards and computer programmers to manip manipulate these stock prices to steal the wealth off the average Joe investors. Goldman Sachs hired a computer whiz, math whiz, computer programmer named Sergey Lenikoff in May of 2007. July 3rd, 2009, the FBI arrested the Goldman Sachs computer programmer and he was downloading over 1,000 secret codes and files and sent it to a German website. What we do is risk management. Because we had this risk, because we were accumulating positions, which by the way, we acquire from clients who want to sell them to us, we have to go out ourselves and, and provide and source the other side of the transactions so that we can manage our risk. These are all exercises in risk management. Well, it sounds to me a little bit like selling a car with faulty brakes and then buying an insurance policy on the buyer of those cars. Pension funds who have the life savings of police officers. These teachers. are the professional investors who want this exposure. A sophisticated investor that creates the exposure that these professional investors are seeking. Again, the most sophisticated investors who sought 
that exposure. You can't tell one group of investors, this is something you ought to buy, and then tell another group of investors, this is something you really ought to sell. Goldman Sachs is one of Wall Street's most storied and powerful firms. President Clinton's Treasury Secretary Robert Rubin was a former Goldman CEO. So was President Bush's Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson. The case involves just a small piece of Goldman's business. But the symbolism is big. Yeah, absolutely, because it goes right to one of the investment vehicles that was at the heart and perceived as at the heart of the overall financial crisis. This is something that, if it sticks, could fundamentally uh, address a whole range of conduct by a whole range of firms. On these reports of the firms like Goldman Sachs or almost everybody today, any of the big and in, in large investment banks, the great majority of their income takes from uh, comes from risk taking. In other words proprietary trading, put the, putting the firm's own capital, uh, providing liquidity to institutions or, or to, to individual investors, primarily inst institutions. That's where the money is made. In June of 2008, Goldman Sachs Board of Directors secretly met with Hank Paulson in Russia in June of 2008, three months before the financial meltdown on Wall Street in September. Today, uh, the SEC charged Goldman Sachs and one of its employees uh, with fraud in connection with the sale of a synthetic collateralized debt obligation. The civil complaint alleges Goldman failed to disclose conflicts of interest to its clients. Essentially, the SEC is saying Goldman deceived its investors. That is correct. Ted of course, we have an obligation to fully disclose what an instrument is and to be honest in our dealings. But we are not managing somebody else's May money. May 18, 2010, and Germany overnight announced a ban on naked short selling. So what is the relationship? Did German, did the German government find out what the Goldman Sachs secret codes and secret software and the files that were sent to the website, did they find out what they were? and caused them to react so quickly. The SEC alleges it worked like this. In February of 2007, Goldman Sachs created what it called Abacus, a basket of mortgage-backed securities to sell to investors. But the SEC says Goldman failed to tell them some of the securities were chosen by an outside hedge fund manager named John Paulson, who in turn was placing bets they would fall in value. The Securities and Exchange Commission has charged the powerful investment bank with fraud. The SEC accuses Goldman of an elaborate mortgage investment scheme tied to the collapse of the housing market. And officials say today's charges could be the tip of the iceberg. You'll Guaranteeing these banks this year in 2010, four trillion dollars. That means that these banks could go out like they're doing and keep playing these games and no matter whether they win or lose, their bets are backed by the people. Washington is Wall Street, and Wall Street is Washington. Who's the Treasury head? Timothy Geithner. Where is he from? The New York Federal Reserve Bank. Who was the Treasury Secretary before him? Henry Paulson under Bush. Where was he from? Goldman Sachs. Only a child wouldn't see what's going on here. to enforce new rules on Wall Street and get referees in place. Who are they gonna be? Is it gonna be the SEC? 